glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. O Lord, open now our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. No. 
reading from Matthew. Come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. This morning is Canticle 4, S190. Through the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high hath visited us. Through the tender mercy of our God, the day spring. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Merciful God, who sent thy messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Christ, our, Re our Redeemer, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's hymn is hymn four, and you can find it on Chapel Green. Fourteen, sorry, fourteen.
Almighty God, we pray for the bishops of your holy church, especially for the Right Reverend Carly Hughes, Diocese of Newark. With our family in the Anglican Communion, we ask you, Father, to bless our common life. Today, we especially give you thanks for the Anglican Church in Rift Valley and Tanzania and their bishop, the Right Reverend John Doughty Lupa. Now, O oh Lord, we offer you our thanksgivings and petitions with our lips and in our hearts. Please be seated. Baby, you can be soft, like the threaded cotton of your sheets like the cool breeze on a moonlit night, like the warm glow of a distant candle, soft like the waves of my love that beckon you to stay a while. Baby, come lay with me in this place of returning to yourself, your inside space where time reveals itself as an illusion, inside where time stops rewinds, and fast forwards all at once. Baby, you can be soft. I offered this poem back in the spring when my CIS and all such services were canceled. The rug had pulled out from under all of our feet and I needed a soft place to land. Sometimes I heard these words in the voice of Mother Divine other times by Jesus. Now, several months later, I don't need that soft place any less. The world still seems as uncertain as it did back then. And yet, the earth keeps moving, nature keeps naturing, and we still have our seasons. 
and its advent, and I'm so glad about it. The divine feminine dwells with us in these weeks of gestation, right before the arrival of our Emmanuel. And we get to hear our Dean preach about the Queen of Heaven, which is pretty cool. And J. Alanis retell the origin story of the Virgin of Guadalupe. We get to invite softness into our lives at the time of the year when we perhaps need it the most. The time of year when anxieties flock to us and the amount of work and responsibilities seem to outweigh the time left in the semester. The time of year when these things are compounded by the trauma of global pandemic. The losses are great, but softness greets us at the end of a long day and enfolds us like a warm blanket pulled straight from the dryer. Softness wraps us up into its womb-like glow, and we sit in that space, dreaming of Jesus' coming. Dreams of Jesus as our redemptor, our guide, and our teacher. Before coming to seminary, I told my spiritual director that I'd been dreaming about sitting at Jesus' feet outside of the temple. I pictured myself on the steps of the temple, knees folded up into my body, hanging onto his every word, enraptured by the way his voice sounded to my ears, captivated by Jesus' presence. And then me sitting there like a sponge soaking up every ounce of wisdom that Jesus poured into me. I yearned to raise my hand and fix my mouth to ask him a question. Rabbi, what do you think about this? Or Rabbi, how about that? Teacher, you said X but I really feel like, why? And then I would wait with bated breath for Jesus to call my name like he did to Mary in the garden, or call me daughter, like the woman reaching out for his cloak, because I was reaching out for him. I wanted to be as close to Jesus as I could get, so I said yes to those dreams and manifested them into the reality of coming to seminary, following my teacher wherever he led. And this is the Jesus that we meet in Matthew's gospel, teacher extraordinaire, the one who came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Jesus as this accessible, walking, talking, and breathing embodiment of Torah, wisdom personified. And the wisdom Jesus has to teach us today is so right for this season of soft advent. He says, come to me, all you that are weary, come to me. Can you picture that? Can you hear Jesus telling you he wants you near. He says, weary ones, it's okay. It's time to rest now. Come to me and I will teach you my ways of gentleness and humbleness and heart. And when we draw close to Jesus, when we draw close to that beckoning and we learn his ways of easy yokes and lightened burdens, we find rest for our souls. This Jesus reminds us that mercy and not sacrifice is what is required of us. That the fruits of our lives are not dependent upon our exhaustion. That our current and our future ministries as counselors, pastors, teachers, priests, seminary employees, and chaplains 
do not require the sacrifice of our wholeness. And this feels important to say for a community of people who have said, yes, God, my life's work is to care for the souls of others. But I ask us all, what good will our ministries be if we do not care for our own souls? I watch all of us walking around with empty cups or half empty cups and inadequate amounts of time to fill them up. The pace we're going now is unsustainable. But I think we know that. The softness calls out to us. Baby, you can be soft. Soft like the waves of my love that beckon you to stay a while. Now, I don't know how you're feeling right now. Maybe this, all of this is soothing to you. Or maybe you're thinking, yes, that's fine. Sounds great, Lindsay. But I have a to-do list a mile long. And you know what? These papers are not going to write themselves. You might say to me, you're living in a fantasy land. If you think that I have time, sit around and dream about Jesus. <laughs> and that's fair enough. If you're in that last group, you might not be too far off base. Because I'm casting a vision of our community that doesn't exist. A future where we don't have to carve out time to do the things that sustain nourish and enliven us and then feel guilty about the things that we didn't accomplish, constantly burdened by what we still have left to do, but rather a future where those lower vibrational but still valid feelings and times of hairiness are the carved out pieces of our lives, a fantasy land where we enter into all that we do with joy and pleasure, a place we find ourselves through revolution. And I'm not talking about signs and hands and feet in the streets kind of revolution, but more like the Earth's revolutions around the sun, this unhurried turning of ourselves, our bodies, our minds, and our souls. So as we continue to examine our institution on a structural level, there are things that we can do on a personal level. We can lean into the rewriting of our future by taking small steps like asking, what will make this day or this moment less sharp? How can I soften it up a little? We can find moments of joy and pleasure and savor them like a decadent dessert. Take naps in the middle of the day. Please do. It's delightful. <laughs> Dance with wild abandon for no reason. Call the nap ministry, nap as in night night. Call the nap ministry's free hotline and hear the nap bishop's weekly message. Email me, I have the numbers. <laughs> Visit their website, blog, and their Instagram page. Stalk the heck out of them and learn how we deprogram ourselves from treating our bodies like machines rather than the liberating space that it is. If you're feeling any kind of resistance to this, ask the why. Why does all of this sound like some form of science fiction? Who or what told you that you had to earn rest or joy or pleasure? And then take that to Jesus. Sit at his feet and have a conversation with your teacher. Come into his soft place and let him teach you how his yoke is easy 
and his burden is light. Let him teach you over and over again until you finally believe it. And hear Jesus when he says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Rest into Jesus. And now, may the presence of the Lord go before us, remain behind us, and surround us 